Hey everyone, Power Word Heal here, and today we're going to talk about Shaman Runes. And uh, a little bit of a correction before we start, it was brought to my attention that they are, in fact, called runes, not glyphs. So uh, my priest video uh, <laughs> pretty much called them glyphs at all times, but those are runes. And uh, we'll be calling them runes going forward. If we make any mistakes, if we say glyph, we, we basically just mean uh, rune. So thank you, Yoda, for uh, my guildmate for pointing that out, uh, because I think it actually is a uh, like a point of concern with those two terms, especially given that Wrath Classic is kind of like in full swing right now, and you know a certain percentage of that player base may decide to come back and check out uh, Season of Discovery, because they do have glyphs in uh, Wrath Classic, right? Obviously, so <laughs> it could definitely be a bit confusing, but yeah, so. We're talking about runes, and uh, I'll start this video off by just briefly describing them like I did for the other class video. So basically every slot, you can see here, chest, legs, and gloves, or I guess not every slot, but those are the three that we're going to start with, and they're probably going to add more slots as they come. They have a rune slot, and uh, each of these things you see here are a rune that can go in that particular slot. And when you put that rune in, you get like either an active ability or a passive ability, basically whatever it says on the rune. Um, you can only have one per slot, and you can change them out uh, as long as you're not in combat, it seems. We're not really sure entirely on the details, like how long it takes to swap them or anything like that. But yeah, so today we are going to be going over the shaman ones. And uh, I kind of, you know, at first I was like, when I saw the shaman runes, I was like, oh... This is going to be maybe a boring video because, you know, there's kind of, with the priest, we had, like, two very distinct healing choices in every tier. And it was kind of like, you could set the video up as, like, okay, which one is better, right? Or, like, which one, which case would you use this, which case would you use that? And the shaman one, at first glance, you look at it and it's like, okay, there's, like, healing rain, earth shield, and water shield for the healing stuff, right? And obviously, you could still make a video, you could still talk about it situations you think they'll be useful and how useful you think they'll be overall but i think there's actually like a bit more to it especially in tier one um and even in tier two tier three is pretty uh you're pretty much taking water shield uh, <laughs> we'll still talk about water shield but yeah i'm pretty sure you're, you're just taking water shield there so as a as a resto shaman at least in pve um obviously pvp hybrids can mess around with some of the other stuff but yeah, so let's get right into the chest slot here. And so the most obvious thing to look at is obviously Healing Rain. Um, if you haven't played other versions of the game, this is basically just like, you know, you puts a circle on the ground like it says here, 15 yards uh, around target player, and it, it heals everybody. It's kind of like, I would say it's akin to a regeneration effect. Um... It obviously is a heal, but what I mean by the regeneration effect is, like, it's not, um... I feel like a hot, like a traditional druid hot, right? It, uh... It feels a bit chunkier when it comes in, whereas this is, like, it's ticking very often, right? But it's ticking for, like, a lower amount, so it... It feels like a regeneration circle, is how I would sort of describe it. Um... And... Right away, like, one of the things that's, like, annoying about this, and I don't recall exactly if this was different in other expansions or anything like that, but it's, like, player-targeted, and I would have preferred this to be ground-targeted. Uh, I think it would be really cool if you could just, like, cast it, you know, somewhere on the ground, and, uh, you know, you have, like, complete control over where it's going. I guess you still have, you still have control, but if you want it in a very specific spot, um and somebody is not at that spot yet, you can't really put it there, which is, like, a bit, could be a bit annoying in some cases, right? Like, if you want to get it down kind of, like, beforehand to have immediately uh, people move into the area, you have to wait for, like, the first person to get there, and then you can put it on them. Um, you know, I guess it does require you to bit, be a bit more cognizant of, like, your raid and the players that are kind of, like, more cognizant players and aren't just, like, tunnel-visioned on using their abilities and are actually, like, you know, watching the fight and what's going around, they'll maybe have an advantage here because they can, like, those players will naturally be better at identifying which player they want to cast uh, Healing Rain on for maximum effect. Um, 
So there is that component to it, but I think most people are just going to find that a bit of a clunky aspect to it, so I'm not sure everybody's going to love that. In terms of the heel itself, um, it, I don't think it's inherently a bad heel, but I think that going back to like the, um, the barrier thing we were talking about with Priest, where we were asking, you know, are we going to use Power Barrier? And it's like, well, I don't know, because right now, as Classic stands, there's not a ton of use cases for something like power and barrier. And I view healing rain, even though it, in some ways it, um, you know, it's like a completely different functionality in terms of like straight up preventing damage. And then versus this is like a very low percentage or like a very low amount of healing tick per second. Um, you know, I, it's still definitely similar in that way of like, both of them are not really mechanics but both of them are providing solutions to problems that we haven't really had to um, deal with in this game yet, right? So it's like we haven't really had those like huge raid damage phases where you need the power barrier, and we haven't really had those like constant rot fights where something like healing rain could actually be potentially really useful, um, right? Where you're basically ticking down in the exact same time frame as healing rain is trying to tick you up. So if we get more stuff like that, um, where, you know, you're taking lots of ticking damage, like, obviously, the usefulness of this will be, like, higher, you know? But until we, like, see content like that, it's kind of really hard to say, like, how effective this is going to be um, overall. And then if you look at it, it, it kind of has the same issue that I was afraid of with the Priest Barrier, where it says, um, Player's Party. You know, so it seems like it's going to be party targeted. And we talked before about how, you know, if you look at Shaman's Chain Heal, I think I'm not sure if it's in the current version of Chain Heal and Classic, but in one of the versions, I think in the 2019 version, it definitely said, um, I think, party members only for the heal, and it jumps out of party clearly. So it's not guaranteed that this is uh, only party members, but I would say that it does seem like it's probably going to be only party members. And the reason why I say that is because, um, like, the tooltip for a chain heal was made a long time ago, right? And when they brought it into 2019 Classic, they probably just brought in the tooltip. And maybe at some point they had considered that it would only be a party heal and then realized, like, hey, that would be, like, untenable. You have to let it heal the raid. They just never really changed the tooltip. And people kind of picked up that it, it did heal other people, so it was never really, like, a huge problem, right? Um, but this, like, you know, they, they're they giving us these new abilities, right? Everything here is new completely, so they get to choose how it sounds, how it's worded, everything like that, which makes me believe that the uh, messaging is completely intentional, and it is meant to be a party heal. And I think that's just kind of, like, a, a shame, because it to me, it just, like, kind of guts the potential effectiveness of something like this. And I can see why they would do that. The same thing with Priest Barrier, because I think that they're thinking, like, if we allow these spells to be raid-wide, um, you know, they'd just be too broken. And I can honestly kind of see that. They would need to, like, make massive, massive adjustments to some of the encounters and fights. And I think we're expecting adjustments, for sure. Like I mentioned in the last Priest video, that I think that they are going to kind of throw us some bones and give us some stuff to work with to make some of these spells gain a bit more value in this new season, but I don't know that they'd be able to, like, crank it up that much, you know, if you could have, like, everybody sit in your healing rain or everybody sit in your barrier. Like, I don't think they're planning on changing the content that drastically, so I, I think it is probably going to be party-based only, and if it is, then, you know, I, I think the usefulness is, is obviously it's just limited, right? Especially once we get to a 40-man setting. Um, and, and one more reason why I think that it, it actually will be party only is because if you look at Paladin's Beacon, and now keep in mind, Beacon just wouldn't really work if it, like, well at all if it was party only, right? Yeah. But it does explicitly say on Beacon that, like, you can heal anyone in the raid and it will heal the uh, the Beacon target. Right, so it's not like, like, I feel like the nomenclature would kind of be the same uh, there if there was going to be, like, a mistake here, and this 
could heal everybody. So just something to keep in mind there. But yeah, I, I think I just kind of expect this in the current sandbox that we have to kind of be a pretty mediocre ability. Um, it's not going to get a ton of value. I guess it would depend on how much mana it costs as well. You know, if, if it's insanely cheap, um, then having it down is, is almost of no consequence, right? So you might as well have it down. But if it if it does cost something substantial, then I think it would be hard to get to get full value out of it. And moving over to the, the next thing I want to talk about here, overload. So I think this is honestly the thing that most people are going to be looking at um, for healing talent, actually, in this. And it's actually really cool that it's kind of like a hybrid. Um, like, I like that it works with chain heal, chain lightning, etc. And it even works with a healing wave, which is kind of cool. Um, and could be... I think that one, it, it tends to be probably not quite as good. Uh, it could be nice, I guess, like tank healing and stuff like that. Um, but I feel like the, the healing wave might do quite a bit of overheal. I mean, the chain heal will probably do overheal as well. Uh, but I think that there's just more... Um, probably opportunity for the chain heal to find additional targets and find value, obviously. Um, whereas if you're kind of like hitting a single target with, like like basically if you're using um, healing wave and, you know, y you have somebody that's like 70% and you're casting healing wave with the intention to bring them to 100, um, most of that secondary heal is probably going to be overhealing, right? Whereas like, when you're firing chain heal into the clump because the raid is just taking tons of tons of raid damage, at that point, it's probably gonna have a better chance at like finding targets that are that are lower and still need healing. I think at that point, and um, the thing is, is that like it, it doesn't work with um, lesser healing wave, I believe, because it just says healing wave. So, in terms of like spotting the raid. It's probably uh, it's probably not going to duplicate there, uh, which which is probably fine, right? Because I feel like if you're, if you're spotting, um, a lot of the times like you'll tend to be if you if you're using a max rank lesser healing wave to to spot somebody, again you're running into that same healing wave thing where like they're probably going to be um, right in the range where you're gonna like bring them to full health, right? So anything, like, if it duplicates after that, it's just going to be um, overhealing. Uh, if you're... The one thing is, like, since, you, like, maybe if you are trying to cast, like, more healing waves on the tank, um, that could kind of be useful, having it being duplicated there, like, casting, like, a lower rank uh, healing wave, and, you know, just, like, a percentage of the time you're going to get more throughput. So I think that could be an interesting use. But, uh, again, tanks in this game tend to kind of get spammed, you know, so I think there is kind of also a kind of like a large chance that it's going to go into to overhealing there. And, you know, overhealing on something like this is obviously not the end of the world because it, it's free, right? This is not like the bad type of overhealing. It's just in terms of, I'm just talking about what I, in terms of it, in terms of like what is going to get the most value out of being cast by it. And I think, um, I think that's going to be probably chain heal and i think since everybody loves casting chain heal period and it is a shaman's basically best spell uh you know augmenting your best spell to just have like a 33 percent chance to essentially double cast is is really great and also just double casting a chain heal is better than double casting a healing wave in most cases right because even though it's having like half the effectiveness it's still potentially jumping three times so the amount of value is, is really good there. The healing coefficient on um, chain heals is really good, right? When you factor in all the bounces, uh, especially if you, you know, if they're still keeping some of the set bonuses the same and we get the three piece uh, tier two, right? So I, I think overload is definitely going to be the uh, play to, the, the way to go in, in tier one here. Um, and you know maybe healing rain, healing rain situa situationally on some fights, but yeah, I think we're taking overload. 
So going into legs, um, this is one where <laughs> when I first saw this, I was like, okay, I guess we're just taking Earth Shield, right? And then I looked at like ancestral guidance, and I was like, okay, but like, like I understand like how this could have some application, but it's probably not going to have application if you're trying to be a pure healer uh, in most cases, right? And then um, I was looking at shamanistic rage, and I was like. Okay, like, you know, this is a, um, kind of like, a, you could look at it as, like, a personal CD from retail, right? You don't really have many of those in classic, but that's kind of cool. Uh, it reduces all damage you take by 20%, and then it gives you mana regeneration, which is interesting. But then, you know, you read a little bit further down, and, um, at first I completely wrote it off, because I was like, oh, it's attack power base, but then I saw it was, like, spell power or healing power, whichever value is higher. And as a healer, your healing power is going to be higher. And, uh, I was like, well... Let's do like six percent. Let's do like five hundred healing power, right? Let's say like that's a reasonable pre bis, especially probably with like the new gear and stuff. You'd probably be able to get more than that. I think you can already get more than that if you're like pure maxing for plus healing in pre bis, uh, which probably is trolling to be honest. But <laughs> you're at least gonna get five hundred, we'll say, right? And I think that comes out to like what like thirty mana per five, which when you see that number, you're like, that's not terrible, but the problem is it's only for 15 seconds, right? So if it gave like a flat 30 MP5, you know, now we're kind of like, oh, this is like approaching some things that priests have, you know what I mean? But the fact that we're getting it only for 15 seconds on like a cooldown, that's not really that great. And uh, the damage reduction is nice, but it's like, how do we really need this? You know what I mean? Um, this obviously seems like they're putting it in the game to be more of like a tank cooldown. Um, and I think that we're just not going to have a ton of situations where you need to have like a, a healer have a dynamic 20% damage reduction. Because if, um, the, if they were going to balance the game to a point where like personals like that were going to be featured we'd see more of them we'd see like other classes getting like a lot more of them you know we'd probably see like a, a rogue version of that with like faint um for example uh maybe we'd see like some of the stuff hunter has gotten like an exhilaration or something like that we don't really see any of that coming in at least from what i see so i think you're probably not going to need a personal really um and then I, I looked at Way of the Earth, and, you know, I'll get back to Way of the Earth in a second. We're going to cover Earth Shield first, but I think Way of the Earth is a little bit interesting, uh, even for Healer. So, looking at Earth Shield, I was, like, a little bit disappointed, to be honest, because it just seems, like, so pedestrian, right? Like, I don't know, just give me any other effect on Earth Shield. Give me, like this target takes more healing, even if it's only from, like, one particular type of shaman heal or something like that, or only from the shaman that casts Earth Shield or something. Um, yeah, I... Like, it's fine, you know? Um, I think that if you're obviously going for, like, raw HPS option... It's probably just going to be one of those things where there's no point in not having it up, right? Like, you just take it. It can only be put on one target at a time. Um, and you just you toss it on the tank, probably, right? Or, you know, there'll be maybe other potential use cases for this. And he's going to take damage. It's going to act as like kind of like a hot, but it's like a reactive hot for when he's taking damage, so it's better, so it's not overhealing. But the thing is, it only lasts for three charges. Then it has to be reapplied. Um, I don't think it would have a cooldown. So the reapplication part is not really a problem, and as long as like the mana cost is in line, I, I assume it's going to be made where basically like you're probably, wanna gonna, you're probably going to want to keep this up all the time. Because I think that that's how it functioned in most of its history in like kind of like retail after it got added to the game, right? Where the idea was you have pretty much 100% uptime or as high uptime as you could you could have if it did have a cooldown on this ability. Um, so I'd imagine it's probably going to be balanced in a way like that where the mana cost is like very reasonable. 
and you're just going to keep it up on the target that's getting hit, essentially. Um, it kind of reminds me of pre-amending, but just, like, less fun, essentially. And, like, kind of completely... Like, it's completely set and forget, right? Because at least mending, it's like, you know, there's a little bit of thinking there in terms of, like, is this is the target that it might, like, your first target is probably going to take damage, but it's like, is like a is there a chance that, like, the next target that it potentially is going to jump to, what's the, what's the chance that that's going to take damage within 30 seconds? You know what I mean? And cause it to bounce again, because you want to get, like, good value out of it, right? Whereas this just seems like, like, you just throw it up there. <laughs> and, and that's all it is. So we'll have to see, like, how much mana it costs, like, what the scaling on it is, right? Um, stuff like that. But I, I don't think it's it's like a bad ability by any means, you know? Um, it's just like not super interesting and it definitely could be what you take here. Um, I think it says only one elemental shield can be active at a time. So the interesting thing here is that like if you have more than two shaman in your 40 men raid that are healing... Which I feel like is going to be a reasonable, um, like that's probably going to be like a reasonable thing, right? You're probably going to have more than two shaman healing in your raid. So would they all take earth shield, right? Because there are fights that, you know, require three to four tanks, etc. Sometimes more. But by and large, like a lot of things are being main tanked and off tanked. You know what I mean? So... And, and, and the fights that do require, like, four tanks or something like that, it's it's not really clear to me that you're going to need something like Earth Shield on those fights. Um, and you, you can't have Earth Shield on the same target. Um, obviously, if everybody did take Earth Shield that was a Resto Shaman in your raid, you know, you could just um, put it on, like, random targets because it lasts 10 minutes you know and at some point they will probably you'll you'll get value out of it i'm sure right and when it gets eaten up you can just put it on somebody else so it's you know you definitely all could take it it's not like it would be wasted because you could just put it on random warriors in your random like melee and eventually they would take damage and you get value so yeah i'm not really sure uh about that but I want to kind of get into Way of Earth because it, it really does... It, I think it is kind of an interesting thing. So, now this requires Rockbiter active, right? So I think what that means, if I remember correctly, is that you can't have an enchant on your weapon. So you're dropping 55 healing. So right out of the gate, like, I know that this is going to be, like, a, a brain breaker for everybody. You know, like, oh, I can't have my plus 55 healing enchant on my main hand. Like, it's over. Uh... You know, we're absolutely not taking this complete trash. Um, but it, it's sort of, like, interesting in the sense of 30% health is a lot and 10% reduced damage is really nice. Um, I think the problem with this, though, is the 100% increased threat. Because it's not, like, 100% increased threat on... Um, like, it... it Augment Earth Shock to taunt, right? But it's, if it was only like 100% increased threat on Earth Shock or 100% increased threat on damaging abilities, that'd be one thing. But since it's just 100% increased threat overall, I feel like that's kind of a lot of threat. And honestly, healing threat in Classic is not, uh, it's not trivial. As a matter of fact, I think that's actually one of the things I like about this Overload talent, talent is that um, it actually mentions at no additional cost that causes half damage or healing and no threat. And the no threat would obviously seemingly apply to, like, both the healing and damage portion, right? Which is good because, to be honest, healing threat is, is like I said, it's not insignificant in this game at all sometimes, uh, especially if you're, like, quickly reacting to things, like, on a pull. Like, for example, if, um, you know, somebody pulls, like, a lava pack in Molten Core and the tank, like kind of pulls it incorrectly or gets pulled back a, a hunter pulls it and people don't pick up their stuff right away and things like multi-hit somebody and then like you ns them to save them and suddenly like aggro's ripped right a lot of stuff like that can happen um so healing threat is definitely 
a thing in this game and having a 100% increased threat I think will absolutely uh, cause some some issues especially with things like nature swiftness uh, on shaman where like if you're trying to save somebody now all of a sudden the boss might be on you because you just hit like a huge heal that's instant and you have a 100% threat while, that's, uh, while doing it so I think that alone may kill this but it's a little bit sad because I kind of like the idea of just like having the extra health and damage reduction. It's kind of cool. It's also like 10% uh, total damage reduction. It's not um, like physical or elemental or something like that. So it's actually really good. Um, and yeah, I think it would actually just be kind of cool to, to have that be like an option where you're just a bit more durable. Um, I'm always a fan of making, like when I play Shaman, I love using a shield on Shaman. I mean, there's some fights where, like, if you're fighting, if you're, um, you know, doing Golemag, you're, you're probably not going to have your shield out, right? Unless it's your best, um, like, your best offhand anyway. But I think for a lot of the instants, having your shield out is actually just kind of cool because, you know, the armor value it gives is, is really the thing. Like, block is not necessarily super great in this game, um, so the the actual ability to block with the shield, not as important as somebody might think, but just the armor value it gives uh, is huge, and the fact that you can enchant it with uh, stamina is really nice, because you can't enchant other offhands, right? So I'm definitely uh, a fan of increased survivability, because especially when you're just speedrunning and shit, shit hits the fan all the time, but... Um, I think the 100% threat cost is just, is too much. Uh, I might be willing to sacrifice the healing, because it's only on, like, one slot, but I think the 100% increased threat is just, uh, is a little bit too much, so I think you are going with Earth Shield for, for this tier, most likely. Um, so let's get into the gloves, and this one, obviously, pretty easy for... PV healing, you're going to be taking Water Shield. I think the only interesting thing about this is that um, I'm wondering if it's like 1% mana per 5 per globe. Uh, I don't think it is because let's say you have like 8k mana, which is not unreasonable with like a flask, especially um, like late game at level 60, then like one globe, like if it was per globe, one globe would be... Uh, 80 mana per 5 seconds, which is actually insane. Uh, at that point already, you're like... Like, honestly, just Water Shield in its base, when you have, like, a, de a reasonable amount of mana, uh, is quite is quite good. This is going to be... Like, it was much needed on Shaman, for sure. Um, and I think this combined with stuff like... Uh, your, your, your Mana Totem and stuff, Mana Tide, is is definitely going to be really good. Um, especially because now that other classes like Druid are getting Wind Fury, and other specs of Shaman are going to be able to get Wind Fury uh, for the melee groups. Um, and like, so it, like you, in other words, using an Enhance may not be like completely troll, right? And um, if you had an Elemental Shaman, you know, you could probably still put them in the melee group or something like that if you needed to. So it may actually free up more Shaman to go into a caster group. So you may actually, you're getting Water Shield, but the overall changes to the game may allow you to also get a Mana Tide Totem as well as the Mana Regen Totem, which would make Shaman just, uh, just like a lot better, uh, for sure, to, like in terms of benefiting the other casters, right? Um... But, yeah, so it would basically be, like, 240 mana if it was uh, 80 per globe, which I think would just be absolutely insane. And I can't imagine that being a real thing. But if it is a real thing, um, it's super powerful, and it actually might make Shaman kind of an insane healer, because when you combine that with um, Overload, where now your Chain Heal, which is your best spell, is, like... It's, it's more effective, essentially. Um, that's going to be a pretty interesting combination. 
One thing I would, I think I would like to see on this is that I do like the idea of it being per globe, but if you need to like rebalance it, it could be like 0.33% uh, percent of your maximum mana per five per globe. And the idea there is that like, it's kind of like a little bit of a nerf, obviously, right? But I think it would help better players stand out a little bit. It wouldn't be like a huge thing, but it would basically be like, you know, if you're not taking unnecessary damage, um, then you're keeping more of your globes and therefore you're having your, your regen for longer without having to recast it. The interesting thing here is it does mention 4% of max mana is restored to the caster when a globe um, gets consumed, right? So depending on like the mana cost and stuff, it, it has you wondering like, okay, like would it actually be beneficial to get hit by stuff to restore mana? But I absolutely doubt that's going to be the case. I think this is going to be a thing where like it lasts 10 minutes, but this one's going to cost probably a lot more than Earth Shield. So the idea is that you, um, you know, you want to put it on and essentially keep it on, you know, and you're not going to want to be like constantly reapplying it, which means you're not really going to want to take a bunch of unnecessary damage. Um, but yeah, it could be cool if like, you know, if you're, oh, the Shaman, he doesn't, take a ton of raid damage you know he, he plays well so he's he's got his one percent mana per five going all the time whereas these other shaman they either have to spend mana like recasting it where at that point it may not even be efficient or they're sitting at maybe like one globe you know so they only have like 0.33 of the mana or something like that stuff like that could be kind of fun right but otherwise it's it's, it's a good ability it's a much needed ability it's probably absolutely going to be a shield you're going to be using at resto uh, until they, unless they give us like another shield down the line. But for now, that absolutely seems to be the case. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the Shaman. Um, I think Shaman looks fun. I am probably going to be playing like Alliance this go around, but, uh, like definitely, well, I'm definitely going to be playing Alliance, but I may make a horde character just to. I, I I think at some point I'm absolutely going to be making a horde character just to kind of check some of the stuff out, because um, honestly, like the chain heal spam with overload and having more mana, like right from the rip, it does seem really fun for sure. Um, and then I kind of want to mess around with elemental as well. I won't really go over that in that video in this video, but um, elemental seems like it could be really fun and really troll so yeah um thanks for watching guys and uh look out for another one of these tomorrow